the fat. We all know it. Between the fretless neck and the big-ass plectrum, the shamisen can seem a bit intimidating to start learning. And without question, uh, the thing that can really demoralize newcomers is just not knowing where any of the positions are. Fortunately, this is something we can easily remedy and make shamisen learning much more fun and enjoyable. This is by using a position strip marker called the fujaku. The fujaku shows all the positions used in shamisen pieces, and when it's adhered to your sol, you can match up the numbers shown in shamisen notations with the numbers shown in the position mark strip. Another cool thing is that fujaku will fit on all shamisen types, hosozao, chuzao, futozao. These are generally referred to as naguta, juta, and sunaru shamisen. However, uh, I will point out that those are shamisen genres, shamisen styles, not the instruments themselves. This is one of the main misunderstandings in shamisen. A lot of questions I get is, can I play tsunaru songs on a nakuta shamisen? That's like asking, can I play blues guitar on a jazz guitar? The guitar is the guitar. The guitar is the instrument. The blues, the jazz, the rock, that's the style of guitar playing. It's exactly the same for shamisen. There are three sizes of shamisen, and particular styles will associate with a particular shamisen, but that's within the shamisen cultural paradigm. It's like being a part of a formal club, a formal party, and there's a dress code. Naguta, Kota, and other styles, their dress code is the hosozal size shamisen. Uh, Jiuta, minyo, formal minyo, and other styles, their dress code is chuzal size shamisen, gidayu, sunaru, and others, futozal shamisen. Shamisen styles, if you're interested in following a formal paradigm and such, yeah, then you pick the one so you'll fit in with the group. However, if you're not interested in the social group sort of uh, element and you just want to you know, enjoy shamisen and try different songs and enjoy the feelings, then whatever shamisen you have will work. Uh, and that's that. So, back to fujaku. Uh, fujaku, yes. Although there are different thicknesses, hosozal, chuzal, futozal, they have different thicknesses, um, the lengths are all the same. So this will fit on all of them. Except for one special type called tanzal. Tanzao is basically any one of these shamisen with a slightly shorter sol. Uh, they're really fun to play. The fingers don't have to stretch as far, and it's easy to move around. However, because the neck is shorter, the scale length is different, so the fujaku won't work. However, these aren't as common, so it's nothing you'll have to worry about. Um, okay, now how to put one on. Let's start with mitsuri. Most shamisen you find have necks that separate into three pieces. And for shamisen made in the modern day, the first joint line of where the top and middle parts come together, these line up exactly where position four is. Sometimes joints on vintage shamisen will be a little off from four, but usually it's close enough. After we find the joint line, put the shamisen on your lap with the side of the sol facing up, and then take your fujaku and peel the paper backing off of the adhesive strip. Now, I find it easiest to control if you stick a finger on either end of the strip, like so. One on the first position, uh, the other finger on the 18th position. With this, pull the strip taut and align it so position four is right over the joint line. When it's aligned, turn your attention to your hand near the tenjin and push the end of the strip down with your thumb. And then remove your index finger from the strip, then press the end down to the wood so it's fully adhered. So one end is tacked down. Now before pressing the rest of the strip down, I wanna make sure it's aligned straight, just for visual aesthetics. So the easiest way to do this is by just pushing down in a few spots by spot tacking it, as it were, uh, that makes it easier to lift up the fujaku if I need to make any corrections. I'll start by pressing position four down to the wood. Uh, now I'll press position 10. All right, look straight. And all the while I'm pulling the fujaku this way to keep it taut. Uh, from here, I'll press position 16 
And at this point, I can take my finger off the other end and then press that end down. All right, check my alignment, looks really good. Now all I have to do is just wipe my finger across the fujaku to adhere the whole strip down to the wood. And there we go, it's all ready. Now, pro tip for those with Mitsuori Shamisen. Uh, as you found out, with this long continuous plastic strip down, you can't really take the saw apart. If you want to be able to separate your saw, here's what you can do. Before attaching the fujaku, use some scissors to cut position 4 and 14 down the middle. Then position the three strips so the short end with half of position 4 is on one side of the first joint line. And then the other strip with the other half of 4 is on the other side of the joint. From there, you'll find that position 14 should line up with the other joint line, more or less. Take the last short end and position it so it's on the other side of that joint line. Now your fujaku is attached and you're still able to separate the sol. For those who have single piece sol called nobezal, there won't be any joint lines to help with positioning the fujaku, so we'll have to do some measuring. Get a ruler and place the tip on the edge of the chipukuro closest to the top surface of the sol. From there, measure 162 millimeters and make a light mark on the sol with a pencil. This is the location of position 4, or what would be the first joint line of a modern Mitsuori saw. Like before, align the position 4 mark of the fujaku with the light pencil mark, and then stick the rest of it down. And those are the ways to attach a fujaku. Now eventually, you'll build up enough muscle memory to the point where you won't need it anymore, but still might find having a few uh, points will just kind of help you know, for reference. And in fact, a lot of professional players will still keep one reference point on position 10, which is the octave. So feel free to use a few small pieces of tape to mark key positions. Uh, 6, 10, 16, anywhere you'd like a little uh, extra assurance. That's about it. Kyle Abbott. B -b -b bonus Finally, final point. Over the years, I've heard some people say, or give the feeling that using a fujaku is kind of like cheating, or that, you know, in principle, uh, you should learn where the positions are just from the wood grain. Basically, kind of the hard way will make you develop the muscle memory better. I understand that feeling and people all learn differently. For me, generally, I found that I develop things much better when I'm comfortable at least for music art related things. So if I have the fujaku on, over time, just the muscle memory is developing to know where exactly to press, sort of thing. So eventually when I take it off, my hands are gonna be coordinated more or less in the right position. Of course, it's gonna take a little time, you know, getting used to the numbers not being there, but overall, I'm generally gonna be in the right area and have more confidence because, you know, that confidence and such was built up beforehand. For me, if this you know fundamental development period was intentionally paired with um, discomfort and uncertainty, that's gonna kind of follow me through the rest of the experience, as it were. Good vibes in the beginning kind of influence the rest of the experience, personally speaking. Um, but you know that's kind of how most all of the instruments I've learned have been that way. Keep it fun, keep it relaxed, and you know that's helped me be very fluent in most all of the instruments that I've done. Uh, do I keep up with them all? No, barely have enough time for shamisen. Not the point. 